So we have got in uh, the chat window, we're gonna put the link for the Arrow website. And for today's webinar, we kind of wanna run it like a workshop and we wanna walk you through the process of getting into the platform. So uh, if you can open that window, we'll talk you through sort of what we're gonna do today. And we're gonna give people a couple more minutes to get in here and then we'll get started. Okay, I took a nice big drink of fluids, so I'm ready to go. I see. So we have, we're doing it this way where I can see everyone's faces because I do wanna be able to ask you questions and engage with you individually. So that's why we're not running it sort of as a talk at you uh, webinar. My name is Yolanda. I'm with the Maricopa SBDC. So if you don't know who I am, that's who I am. And um, we've got on the call with us today, Esmeralda, who's from the state office and um, Kelly, who's from Ripen, uh, the platform we're using for um, our Aero program. So just to give you a little bit of background about what is Aero. Now, uh, let me get started first. We're gonna record, I forgot to tell you that. We are going to record so that folks who could not be here today will be able to view um, the webinar. And if that's uncomfortable for you, just turn off your camera. Um, because we're going to want to share uh, this information with others who couldn't be here today. So I'll give Esmeralda a minute to start the recording. We good? We're good. Okay, so um, so we're here to talk about Arrow. It's our new program um, that the SBDC uh, is working on with, uh, it's in collaboration with the Wells Fargo and with the community college system, Maricopa Community College System. So um, in working together with all these folks, um, we are engaged with Ripen, a platform to help us create a business-to-business -business, uh, platform for like a marketplace. So today's webinar is about the provider side of our marketplace. We also have a service seeker side of our marketplace. So just to give you some, you know, glossary terms, a service provider is someone who is going to provide services within the system. And that makes, that's pretty straightforward. A service seeker is someone who is a small business owner looking to complete a project for their business that business that they may not have had time to do. Um, a lot of times um, as SBDC counselors, we're asking folks and directing folks to get things done in their businesses to help them grow. You know, update your website, send out some mailers, do some social media marketing, marketing, we're suggesting all kinds of things, but we don't provide done for you services. And as a result, we're overwhelming you, right? So this is a solution to that problem where you can go into the platform as a business owner and say, hey, I'd like to update my website and I need some help with that. And then a service provider can come in and say, hey, I've got those skills. I can do that for you. For the service seeker, there is no fee to participate and get your project done in the platform. For the service provider, there is a small stipend that comes when the project is completed. And so that's basically kind of how this works. So I am going to share my screen when Esmeralda says that I'm allowed to, which is now, um, let's see. Okay, and so I'm gonna bring up the website. If you haven't had a chance to bring it up, I'm gonna bring it up. Okay, so if you have questions as we move through this, go ahead and stick those in the chat. Um, I will be answering those as we move along and at the end, because I know that you'll have some questions. So when you come to our arrow page, you're gonna see that there are two buttons in the header area, service provider, service seeker. Again, a provider is someone doing the work, the service seeker is someone requesting um, work done or a project. As you move through our new web uh, page, you can see that there's just lots of information about the program, um, but the buttons all relate to the same thing. Either you are on the service provider side or on the service seeker side. And for today, I'm gonna to be talking about the service provider side. So when I click that button, it takes you to another landing page 
with some additional information um, about the program. At every point, there is a check my readiness button or at the bottom, there's a ready to get started button. They all go to the same place. And that place is a form that you will fill out um, to get started in the program. So we're gonna go through this form sort of step-by-step. Step. It shouldn't take you long to fill it out. I'd like you to fill it out as we're going along um, and get, so that you can get started and get processed. Um, but a few key points to keep in mind, in order to participate in the Aero program, you must be an SBDC client. If you are not an SBDC client, it will prompt you to become one. And that's a very simple process. You'll fill out a form, giving us some information about your business. That form will be sent to the center of the county that your business is operating out of in Arizona. Um, so if, it's, if you're in Maricopa, then you're gonna be sent to our center, the Maricopa Center. Um, and then we'll reach out to you and get you scheduled for an appointment and then get you connected into the Aero platform that way. Um, for service providers, we're requesting that you be um, a viable business. So you have an LLC set up, you have your EIN number set up, you have a bank account so that we can deposit the stipend when you finish or complete the project work. Um, at this time, we do have limitations for the platform. So you can be either a service provider or a service seeker, but not both. So you want to choose which one makes the most sense for you. If you're um, a new business wanting to ramp up and build your client portfolio, and I'm going to use the web design um, example as we go through this. Say you're a new web designer and you want to get started uh, building you know, some projects that you can show on, showcase on your website, et cetera. This is a great way to get started with some small projects <clears throat> for some small business owners who need your help. And at the end of that, you will get a stipend. Now the stipends go up to $1,200 and the projects are going to be uh, chunked into either 20 hours or 40 hours or 80 hours. And in the project scope of the projects you see on the platform, it will say this, we think this is a 20 hour project or a 40 hour project. If you're gonna build a website, that's probably gonna be about an 80 hour project. And that would um, earn you the entire $1,200 stipend. So the stipends are not equivalent to what that work might actually pay you out in the real world. But the idea behind this is to get you some traction, to get you started, to get you some work, to get you some introductions to clients. Um, and, and, and try to help you grow your business. Um, for the service seeker side, someone who's looking to get their website uh, updated, this is a great way for you to meet that person and maybe in the future um, become their web, uh, webmaster and do all their updates, right? And that can be done outside of the platform where you're getting paid from that particular business owner for your services. So there are a lot of upsides to starting and getting in the system. Um, and starting to complete projects. So um, one, a couple of other things. If you are already an SBDC client, you need to be an SBDC client who is not a closed client in our system or an inactive client in our system. And in order to become active, you'll want to engage with your counselor, um, reach out to them, send them an email, do a quick call, um, and then they will provide you the appropriate link to get into the ripen system. So that's kind of how all of that works. Um, and we will be checking those things. And the only, the only reason I'm saying reach out to your counselor and make sure you're an active client is because that piece could prevent you from getting paid your stipend once you've completed the work. Because we have all of these criteria we have to meet for the program. So, um, so that's all that big spiel. So let's get started um, going through this um, questionnaire. It's really pretty straightforward. I'm hopeful that some of you have already started filling this out as we're going along. And again, this is the provider side. So at this point, you're looking to provide services to other small business owners who might have what you need. Um, and so name, um, the county that you reside in is important because we have SBDC centers all throughout Arizona. <clears throat> and so your council will, will be in the county um, that you reside in or that you are doing business in. Oh, I missed a question. Uh, website, if you have that, um, enter that. Um, you can put anything in there. Um, 
what kinds of services you provide. Um, add something here, marketing, bookkeeping, website design, website development. Those are two different things, as we know. Uh, maybe you're a graphic designer. Maybe you're a photographer. Uh, maybe you're a caterer. Um, there are all different kinds of ways in which you can provide services and understand that as we are growing this and we're just getting started, not every kind of project is going to appear on the website, but eventually it will. So you'll want to keep engaging and checking on what new projects have been um, uploaded. Um, do you have reliable access to the internet? This is important because all of this is happening online and many of the projects and the work you will be doing will be happening online. So um, you'll just want to be clear about that piece. Um, this piece is just confirming that you understand that all of the projects on the platform are going to be packaged in hours of, or in uh, scopes of 20 hours, 40 hours, or 80 hours. Um, Let's say, for example, that somebody says, hey, I need a website designed and built, and um, I think that's going to take 20 hours. Well, that's probably not enough time. And so in that, you can negotiate. You can apply for the project and say, hey, I'd like to do your project, but I think we need to renegotiate the scope or terms. And so you're going to be working with those business owners to develop a relationship and make sure that the scope is acceptable to you in terms of how much time it will take you to create the work. Um, and also to educate the service seekers, because many of us don't know how long it takes uh, to build a website. Um, so this is the part where you're going to be engaging. Uh, okay, are you existing clients? So yes, if you say no, we're going to prompt you to become a client. So that's what this question is all about. And if you say, if you're not a client and you say yes, while you will get in the system, again, this can prevent you from getting paid the stipend. So you just want to make sure that you become a client. It's an easy process and it's a fast process. I'm one of the Maricopa uh, counselors. And so you might get assigned to me either way. Um, I'm a lot of fun. So you'll love it. Um, just ask, um, ask anybody who's a client. Leslie, wave Leslie. <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, this is just some additional information on our market uh, marketplace. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, we're going to need your email address and phone number. These are all bits of contact information that you're going to want to have uh, to share with folks who are looking to complete their projects anyway. So we're not asking to do anything top secret. Um, there will be no requesting of credit cards or social security numbers. Um, okay, so this is the last piece. Um, just want to make sure that you understand these couple of conditions. Um, if you do not accept becoming an uh, SPDC client or um, a PTAC client or, you know, ripen related to the program, then you will get, um, you won't be approved to be in ripen, but we'll send you another message asking you to be part of our um, SBDC network, and then we'll want to find out why and all of that kind of stuff. So we do want to engage with you and we do want to get you in this system because I think it's super beneficial. Um, once you get to this part, you're going to submit. The next piece that happens after this, that you will get an email and it will give you a link to get into the Ripen system. So at this point, um, I'm going to hand things over to Kelly. Uh, Kelly is our ripen person. Let me explain a little bit about what ripen is first, because Arrow is the name of the grant program, the program that we're using um, to connect you. But we need a platform online to do that. Um, so this online software allows us to match people, allows us to create all these accounts and you know match you in this marketplace it's already built and that's why um, we've brought ripen in because they've been doing this for a while so they're gonna um, talk you through what the platform looks like when you get in how to use it how to navigate it how to look at the projects that are already in the system um, i'm gonna go over here and stop sharing so that um, kelly can share okay so if you're just jumping in um I can see that, let's see if there's any questions. Uh, how do I find out who my current counselor is? You can, um, okay, so any question about who your counselor is can go to our main email for the program. Uh, so I'm gonna have Esmeralda add that. It's sbg at 
domail.maricopa.edu, and that's a mouthful, so Esmeralda will add it in the chat. So you'll go uh, send an email to us, and we will look it up and find out and get you connected with your, with your current counselor. Uh, how much does Aero SPDC take per project in the sense of dollars? We don't take any of the money. The stipend is the stipend that you, you get paid. Uh, the SBDC does not benefit from any of this. All of the money um, that is being provided for this program is through a grant with Wells Fargo. So thank you, Wells Fargo. And it's all handled through the Maricopa Community College Foundation. And so none of the money part of it is being handled through the SBDC at all. Um, so we don't, we don't take any piece of that. I hope that answers um, that question, Christian. And if not, go ahead and turn on your mic and let me know. Perfect. Okay, so um, Kelly, um, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Yolanda. So hi, I'm Kelly. It's nice to meet you all. I'm calling in from up north in Canada. Um, so I think, actually, I know for a fact, all of you have probably much uh, sunnier days than we have up here. Um, yeah, so I work at Ripen. I'm the team lead for our strategic projects department. And uh, part of why Ripen is being used for the Aero program is that we ran a very similar program over the last year. So we received our own grant and we were able to provide stipends to uh, students who were working with employers on our platform. So um, service seekers um, and employers were posting projects and then we had individuals applying to take on those projects. So a lot of the groundwork and the learning that we've done through that pilot program um, we're a good use case for this Aero program. So um, I will say at Ripen, we have typically worked with students. So the platform um, started with that. So as service providers, um, I'll get the elephant out of the room right away. There are going to be a few pieces of language that um, seem a bit out there. So uh, we're just kind of asking you to roll with us on that. So after you filled out the intake form and confirmed that um, you are an eligible service provider, um, you'll either be directed to meet with an SBDC counselor in order to set you up as a client or to reactivate you to become an open client. And then at that point, you'll receive a link to sign up to Ripen so that you have exclusive access to participate in these projects. So it is a closed ecosystem on Ripen. So um, you have to uh, fill out this intake form and register as a service provider in order to participate. So these options aren't just out there and available for everyone. Um, the first part in the sign up process, you will have to select um, a student user type if you are a service provider and you will be given step-by-step -step instructions to go along with that. So you'll be reminded um, of that step once you have access. Um, and then I'm actually gonna show you what that looks like. So um, once you're signed up, you will have your own dashboard. And I'm using an example of uh, one of my oldest friends who happens to happen to give me permission. Um, so once you're signed up, you can build your own um, profile. So you can say what sort of uh, categories or areas of interest you're, you're um, interested. So, um, Renette is a teacher. She is also like in a classroom environment. She also teaches piano lessons, so runs her own business doing that. Um, and then is also in school for a second undergrad to do um, audio engineering. So you can see there's a wide range of, um, of, of topics there. And what your profile on Ripen allows is um, it actually lets you build a portfolio. So um, as you complete projects, you'll receive feedback from the service seekers that you're working with, um, and you have the option to, to share this. So she has just her star rating listed. She doesn't have the written feedback. Um, for her, she's chosen to list her schooling but not work experience, which is fine. Um, and then you also have the opportunity to list um, any, if you wanted to include like your LinkedIn or your website in your pro uh, profile, you can. These dashboards also let you track all of the projects that you have. So 
from the service provider perspective, this is how you stay organized. So you can see these are all the projects that she is uh, currently participating in or have participated in. So at Ripen, we're a big fan of color coding. So if you have finished a project for a service seeker, that will um, show finish and the, the tile will be grayed out. Uh, for anything that's ongoing, um, this will show up on your dashboard and you'll be able to click on this. Um, and it, you, you have the option of going back to this posting here. Um, in order to find available projects, um, we do have an, a specific arrow portal. Um, so I can actually put this link right in the chat for everyone. I'm gonna get rid of the extra characters there at the end. And if, if you haven't received your email, if you went through the process with us and you have not yet received your email with the link, um, to get on the Ripen platform, then um, Esmeralda can share that link with you right now and allow you to get in there. And I encourage everyone to put some information in the profile. Um, it just makes you a more desirable candidate when you say, Kelly. Yep. Oh, am I frozen or is Yolanda frozen? There Probably was Yolanda. Yolanda was frozen. <laughs> I heard my name and then it all cut out for me. Yeah. Okay, so I've I've put the um the link in the the Zoom chat just so I do recommend booking bookmarking this this portal just so it's easy for you to come back to. Um I am in admin view, so um for service seekers, they'll have this prompt up here to submit project. For service providers, you'll be prompted to join the school if you haven't already. For most of you, you'll be signing up with the link that lets you skip past that step and bypass the access code. So you'll get a unique invitation. Um, and then you'll be able to come to this programs tab on the left here and view available projects. Um, so we've, uh, separated the projects into the categories that we found to be most um, popular on Ripen. Um, there might be more incoming, um, but they're all kind of sorted. So for example, if, if we go back to Yolanda's example, you are um, a web developer, you would click on this posting and you'd be able to come to the projects tab and view um, all of the projects that have been pre-approved for the Arrow program. If you're like, oh, like website design a mock-up, that sounds right up my alley. You can click on the project in order to view more details. Um, there might be a um, date set on here and you'll be able to read through and see the full um, project scope. Yeah, so that's all set up here. Um, and if you're interested, there will be an option to hit apply up here in the top right. Again, my view is just slightly different because I'm an admin. Um, but yeah, um, making an application, um, you're prompted to include um, uh, your resume or a portfolio link, and then you're also prompted to write an introductory message as well. Um, so if I go back to this project from that Renette applied to that we were using as an example, um, the service seekers will see all of the applications coming in from service providers. So I would say make sure to um, Carefully decide what you want to what to say in that introduction, um, just to make sure that your application stands out. Again, as Yolanda said, we are in early days, so I would say that the projects are not um, that competitive yet. But as the program grows and there are more projects and more service providers, um, you you just want to make sure that you can introduce yourself in a way that helps you stand out. Um, you're able to have conversations directly through Ripen. So I won't click into this one just because I don't know what information is there, um, but you can send messages back and forth directly through the platform. And then you're also, of course, always welcome to share like your personal email or um, phone number if that's your preferred method of communication. Uh, the Ripen messaging system does have video chat built in already, um, but it's actually going through an upgrade. So it will integrate with uh, Zoom and Google Meet at the, by the end of the year. I'm never allowed to give you a specific date for any, any platform updates, but that is coming soon. So 
yeah, any questions so far? I'm gonna take my screen away just so I can see the chat a bit better. Anybody have any questions about how the program works? Leslie. So Kelly, I have a question or Yolanda. Um, is this is this only for like project based um, stuff or can we advertise our company um, services ongoing? So for example, I'm a travel management company and I would put on there that if anybody is looking for corporate travel management services, then um, you know that's that's how I would that's how I think I would utilize this platform. But I'm not sure if it's available for something like that. Um, yes and no. So um, the way that Ripen is set up, because with the service provider perspective that has traditionally been students so far. Um, your profile on Ripen will be unlisted by default, but you can share the URL to your, your, um, your page. So once you've done the work of setting up your profile, linking your website and um, describing what you offer, um, if you, you can share that link. So if you know of any service seekers that you think would be a good fit, there's also nothing stopping you from applying to work with a specific company. So say that um, they have some sort of event coming up where they're, um, they're looking for like an event planner. Um, I would say reach out, apply anyways and say like, hey, this isn't exactly what we do. But if you have any guest speakers coming in from out of town, that's an area where we can help you uh, coordinate that travel, get it set up. So um, what we've, we've seen uh, become really Im important with these types of programs is the, the sort of communication. So um, obviously we work with service seekers to make sure the projects are scoped and have as much clear detail as possible. But because you're working with another person on the other side, um, there's always room for negotiation. So um, yeah, there's definitely room to pitch yourself and, and um, advertise what you do beyond um, what's there in the project descriptions. Thank you. Yeah. And Christian has their hand up. Um, I have a question. So I, I might just be confused. I don't know, but I am, I run like a little bit of like a team for my business. Like it's not just me. I'm not a sole proprietor. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's an SBDC question or not, but does it affect anything if there's other people working on the project alongside me? Um, even as long as I'm like point of contact and I'm working with the client and you guys? I would say in that case, um, if there are multiple team members contributing hours, um, I would recommend having each one of them sign up as a service provider because you can actually apply to these projects as a team if you're interested. So say that it's like a, an 80 hour project, um, but you think that two people do each doing 80 hours of work or 40 hours of work um, would be able to do a really great job. Um, you can apply together um, with your team. So um, yeah, if you, if you do have other individuals that you work with, um, you're able to do that. Or even if you don't work together at the same company, but you have someone in your network who has complementary skills to what you're doing. If you're applying to a project and you see there might be a gap and you know of someone else who has is able to provide a service that might might fill that gap, you can recommend that they fill out the intake form on the website and sign up as a service provider themselves. Okay, thank you. Yeah, there's definitely room for collaboration, but everyone does need to be signed up individually in order to receive a stipend. Okay, and Ina has her hand up. Thank you for uh, writing your name pronunciation. That was very helpful. Uh, you are not muted anymore, but I can't hear you yet. If you haven't used Zoom in a while, um, in the bottom left where the microphone is, um, there's a little arrow just to the right of that microphone, and you might just need to select 
a microphone. Alternatively, you always have the option of putting your question in the chat and I can answer aloud for you. I also want to circle back around and make sure um, Christian would, did that answer your question sufficiently? Yeah, I guess it just poses another question. I mean, the payments are going to our business. This isn't a payment directly to us. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it mostly answers my question. I think, I think it's, I'll just like learn. <laughs> I think I'll just like learn from doing it at this point. Yeah, thank you. Right, right. And so, and your, your counselor should be able to answer questions. And if they can't, then they're probably going to connect with um, the uh, Arrow team. And as one of the team members, you know, I'm certainly open to answering questions. So you can use the email address that we posted earlier to ask direct questions. And there will be resources available to you as well once you're signed up. So part of filling out that intake form is you will be given specific instructions that are customized for the Arrow program. Um, and I think maybe being able to read through that and, and see additional information about the stipend payment process will, will probably help uh, organize your thinking as well. Because it, it, and you'll under correct me if I'm wrong, but it's it's not going to be the same as like a typical invoice from a business would look like. It'll it'll be its own process. Yes, but you will. There there is a process, and you will once you've completed the the project, then it goes into this process with the foundation, who is the one um, issuing the payments for the stipends, and so they'll want to get information from you as a business owner and get your EIN get your business name, get your account information for where they can deposit that. Ina has raised her hand again. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. So patience, unfortunately, is not my strength. So I've already set up my ripen account and have gone through the process. But I was reached out by email from someone from Ripen offering uh, student services to me. So I don't know if I set up my account incorrectly or if that's part of the process. I'm just not sure if I registered as a service provider or a service seeker since they reached out to me offering intern services. Yeah, and I can actually look that up for you. So if you're if you're comfortable putting your email in the Zoom chat, I can do some some digging for you. Sure. If you were reached out to by someone on Ripen, it is most likely that you set set up your company with a service seeker account. Um, however, if you're here and interested in being a service provider, I can easily um, change that for you. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I put my email in the chat. I'm just curious how I am set up at this point. Okay, I'm going to mute myself just to dig into this for you. And then, um, and um, it's not urgent, you can do it later, but I appreciate yeah. it. Right. So it well, be long at all. Well, Kelly is taking a look. I can see in the computer, and I may have been one of the people that uh, did an outreach to you, but um, your counselor was Paula but you don't have a new, it doesn't look like you've been assigned a new counselor in the system. So we definitely need to get you set up with a new SBDC counselor because it looks like it's been since June of 2021 that you had um, contact from the center. Yeah, that sounds right. I, I remember being in touch with Paula then Okay, so we need to, um, I'll make sure that uh, you get assigned a new counselor also so that you're active. Thank you. I just took a look and you followed all of the service provider steps correctly. So um, it sounds like someone at Ripen was just a bit too hasty to reach out and sent you, um, that sounds like our typical employer welcome email, but you are set up with a student account, which is, is what is required for service providers. And you are part of the Aero portal, which means as soon as that, um, as your 
uh, client status has been reactivated, you'll be able to apply to projects and everything should be in order to receive um, a stipend for the, the projects you take on. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Uh, does that answer your question in full? Because I, I can see Mark has his hand up next. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. There are a couple of bookkeeping projects in Ripen right now, so get in there. Yeah, this is probably a good time of year to get in there. Uh, Mark. Is there a list for what sort of services that you're looking for for service providers? Um, yes, indirectly. So what we did um, just as a way to kind of have some organization as a starting point is we um, selected the categories that were most um, commonly used during the program that uh, we ran on Ripen over the last year. So the ones that worked best in the vir virtual format we found were um, like visual arts, media and design projects, web design and development, uh, business consulting. And I think business plans are a big part of what um, SBDC um, requires from some clients, uh, SEO and social media, communications, accounting and finance. But we also added a category called advancing entrepreneurship. So that is kind of like a one size fits all option. So if you would like to do something to grow your business and it doesn't fit into one of the other categories, you can post your project here and submit it. So um, for service providers, just so you're aware, um, you won't see the service seeker projects unless they've already been approved by uh, the Arizona SBDC team. So um, the projects that you'll be able to see um, as you click into these different postings, so um, will will all be pre-approved. Um, so you won't be able to see a project unless it is has been confirmed by someone at the SBDC team that them. Um, service providers will be receiving a stipend by taking on that project. So like a follow-up, so on the other side, if I have a project, is there any list or projects that you're looking for or submit and see? Yeah, so again, um, if you are a service seeker and you're looking to post a project, these are the areas that you'll submit to. So service seekers submit projects, service providers apply to projects. Um, so again, um, if your project fits into the one of these categories, um, then we definitely recommend doing that just because, for example, for someone who is an accountant, they're probably going to be looking here first. So submitting your project wherever it fits best is always a good idea. Um, but again, anything that doesn't fit fit that, or if it's a multidisciplinary project, it might take multiple moving parts, then advancing entrepreneurship is the place to submit to. So a project such as, let's say a land developer with a 3000 site a home built project that would be something for a feasibility study that could be taken on? Yeah, if the feasibility study can be done in 20, 40, or 80 hours, absolutely. Um, yeah, I would say like any sort of like research or market research project tends to fit really well into these formats. Yeah, that's a great example. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. I think uh, Christian's hand was up next and then Melissa after that. Okay, I apologize if you just answered this because I like saw an email on my phone and looked away for like 10 seconds. Um, but I am just a little confused of how to navigate to the projects area because I see two different areas that have projects and neither look like the screen that you had up. Um, can you just walk through quickly or just whatever how to get there? I'm like, I'm looking yeah, at- there was there was another question in the back end about that as well, Kelly. Like, how do they see the open projects? Where on the left hand sidebar would a service provider go to see all of the open projects? Yeah, so that's listed under the currently internship programs tab that's soon changing to just programs. So if you are on the Aero portal, um, I sent a second link in the Zoom chat just now. So for anyone that wants to bookmark this so that you don't have to 
uh, remember later, um, that is the tab that you'll need. Um, so on each project, you'll be able to see, actually, let me make sure I'm showing you while I'm talking through this. Um, so while I'm on this, oh, I'm losing my windows. There we go. So while I have the internship programs um, tab selected and I'm scrolling through, you can actually see how many projects have already been approved for each one. So we looked at web design and development already. If I go to visual arts, media and design, uh, you would click on the program page and then click on the projects tab within that program page to view the already um, pre-approved projects. Okay, so for mine, where I click internship programs or projects, or whatever, I only have business consulting projects. I don't have any other options. Okay, and I can look into that for you. Um, I'm just gonna look, are you already logged in or are you looking at the public view? I'm logged in. Okay, okay, that's good to know. I can, I'll look into that off the call just so you don't have to watch me laser. Okay. Thank laser you, thank laser. you. Yeah. Uh, Melissa, do you wanna ask your question while she's working on that? Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you so much. So I think this program offers a lot of um, great opportunities for the businesses throughout the Valley. For me specifically, I'm struggling to see where my business specifically can connect within this realm. I own a mobile auto glass business. Um, so primarily, I was hoping to be able to find the businesses that have fleet vehicles or even the owners themselves needing auto glass services. But I'm not seeing how my company can fit into this process. Right. So as a service seeker, seeking to put a project up there makes the most sense for your business right now until it grows to a point where someone might actually be looking um, for the, the types of services that you provide. So this isn't really a networking kind of site, mm -hmm. right? It's all ba it's like Upwork, right? Project comes in, somebody needs help with something. So if somebody came in and said, hey, I need to have the glass on my vehicle repaired, that would be something you could provide a service for, right? right. But um, from the administrative part of it, of running your business, if you need help with marketing, getting outreach out to those dealerships, having somebody do some research search and creating a list of all of the dealerships in the Valley, um, and then creating a social media campaign for you to reach out to them, or maybe it's a snail mail campaign. That's the kind of project that you could use this platform for as a service seeker. Does that make sense? It does. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. So just a question, let's say that her, her, her company decided to do that. Then the fees for the, the person that did the market research for them, the grant would pick that up. Right. As long as that person is in the platform as a service provider and says, hey, I can handle Melissa's request to do some research and social media um, outreach, right, or create a social media marketing campaign, then they would work with Melissa. She First, she puts the project in the platform. Mm -hmm. Then the service provider comes in and says, I can do that. They work together to get it completed. Melissa gets her campaign the service provider gets the stipend when it's when it's complete. So Melissa is basically going to get a free marketing plan. Correct. So for every service seeker, whatever project they post in the platform, the work will be completed for free. Okay. I won't complain about that. <laughs> <laughs> free marketing help. Yeah, so for the individuals that are signing up as service seekers, so if you have a project that you'd like someone to take on, the only investment from your end is just the time it takes to sign up, create the project, and then communicate with the service providers that are applying. So um, I always like to make sure, like, obviously everyone's time is valuable. So we do recognize that there is some commitment there, but there is no financial commitment from the service seekers that are signing up. And at the end of the day, so say Melissa really loves the work that this particular service provider provided for her. Uh, in terms of this marketing plan, and they got started and she really liked the results she got. Um, she could submit another project for additional uh, support or the, the great you know, outcome could be that she says, you know, I really like this service provider. I think I'm going to contract with them 
um, for 10 hours a week, every week. And now Melissa's paying for a service. The service provider provider has a real client and it's sort of a win-win. Um, ultimately, we'd love to see businesses grow to that. But at the beginning stages, when you're first getting started, um, we everybody needs a little bit of a kickstart. And trying to think around, how do I use this platform for my benefit as a small business owner? Well, practically everything that's sitting on the back burner, because we all have that list, I was a small business owner. It took me years before I got a website, right? Because I didn't have time to do it myself. I didn't know anyone. It was way too expensive. So all of those things on that list that you just keep putting aside because you have clients and client work you need to do, those are the projects that make a perfect fit for this platform because they help, help you grow in ways that you wouldn't be able to grow by just doing the work of opening shop and helping customers every day. So that's kind of how we envision it's gonna help you grow and increase your sales. Does that make sense for folks? Yeah, and if you've been sitting here listening to this and you're, you're thinking, wow, I joined the wrong session and I actually have a project that I need to post, that's okay too. Um, if you're interested in being a service seeker, just as a reminder, you can't do both at once. So. You're either offering your services to receive a stipend or you're posting a project to get help for your business as a service seeker. Um, the website to sign up is the same place. So um, uh, you can choose service provider or service seeker um, and, and start the process at ArizonaArrow.com. So, yeah. Um, if you'd like to... Um... If you'd like to join the webinar that we're doing on Thursday for becoming a service seeker, clearly it's going to be very similar to this, but the slant of what I discuss is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to talk through basically what we just talked through. Like, how do I make this work for me? What kind of project makes sense? Um, and as we talk, as counselors, as we talk with our clients and we make recommendations, there are always things that we're recommending. Um, but how do they get help with that? So this is what that platform's for. So if you want to join on Thursday, um, if Esmeralda can post the link for you to join on Thursday, that would be great too. Um, you'll get to see my happy smiling face again. Um, and we are going to start it at 1030. And next time there'll be virtual donuts. Do they make virtual donuts? I think we need virtual. I, I need virtual donuts. <laughs> I think we can set virtual backgrounds of donuts. Um, will I remember work. to remove it for my meeting My meeting after that? That's always the. <laughs> um, any other questions that anyone has about seeing the projects in the platform? And when you're in the page, I think you just go over to projects. If you click projects, um, I noticed that they all kind of just pop, all the cards just populate of all the various things that are, have been submitted. And Esmeralda has the link for the workshop for Thursday in the chat, if you want to join that. Uh, if we don't have any other questions, feel free to reach out via email at the SVG email address. Um, Oh, thanks for that donut, Kelly. <laughs> I can put it back. They don't last long, but... No, but they're there. And it's chocolate, my favorite. Yeah. Um, if you have questions, reach out. If you want to join us um, on Thursday, please do. Um, it's a lot to take in in a short period of time, and we're here to help you walk through it. Riven has wonderful customer service support. So if you're in the platform and you get stuck or you have a question, use that chat function. Um, you might e even get to work with Kelly. Um, and so they, someone will help you get through and navigate if you're lost or confused at any point in the process. Do you have anything else to add, Kelly? Yeah, so I, I did forget to point it out, so thank you for that. Um, Ripen does have a live help chat in the bottom right corner. It's a bright orange circle, and we are uh, coast to coast, um, and there's we have team members all over North America, so we're usually on from... 9 a.m. Pacific to, uh, sorry, 6 a.m. Pacific to 5 p.m. Pacific, which I believe Arizona lines up with now. Awesome. Christian, you had one more question? Yeah, it'll be quick. And this might be like a silly question, but I'm just curious. No so if SBDC is, you know, uh, through the grant paying for the service providers, 
uh, or for the services for the service seekers, um, where are the unpaid service projects coming from then? Because I see there's a couple projects that are like unpaid. Are those affiliated then? The reason it looks like that on Ripen is because typically the place to put the payment is from the employer's perspective when they create the projects. But because these service seekers, employers aren't paying the service providers directly, it's coming um, through an alternative. Any project that you see on the Aero portal will have the stipend attached. So um, the reason it might just show as unpaid is because the person who posted the project isn't paying the stipend themselves. Uh, okay, makes sense. So then you can negotiate with them like this is how many hours it will take and okay. Yep. Yeah. Think, okay, thank you. That yep. so much. Okay, yep. perfect. Yeah, like I say there it's it you know it's just wrapping our minds around how it kind of works but um any project that's in the aero system um, is for Arizona businesses throughout Arizona and for Arizona service providers so anyone in Arizona we're trying to keep it as an Arizona program um, and everything that comes posted for aero is part of the stipend program if you're a service provider you're part of that program as long as you are an SBDC active client. Thank you. Uh, so we are very close to ending time. Um, if you don't have any other questions, I'll let you get back to your day. If you have any questions in the future, again, just use the email. Thanks everyone for bringing your time and patience. Appreciate it. Nice day.